In this lesson, we're going to look at some string processing functions. Uh, these processing functions all work on data of type string, and they consist of finding the length of the string, the number of bytes required to store the string, to be able to locate a substring within the overall string, to extract a substring, and to locate a character at a particular position within the string. The program shell that we begin with is shown here, and I'm calling it the Cout String Processing C++ program. Okay, so the functions we want to look at are length, size, find, substring, and at. The, der the variable declarations have a couple of strings declared this time, so we have string sentence, and the sentence is initialized to the red text that you see here between double quotes, so that's a string constant. I have another variable, which is sentence spelled backwards, and that's initialized to the null string. So if you have a couple of uh, double quotes together, then that's an empty string that's used to uh, initialize uh, this variable in this case. I have a single uh, character variable for, called letter, and here I have some unsigned integers, uh, length, position, and i. We're going to output to the screen some uh, information which is uh, just string processing functions as some information. The sentence is, and we'll output the sentence, which has already been declared up here, so this will just be output to the screen. All right. Now, once that is done, then we want to look at each one of these functions that I've mentioned already, and the first one is going to be the length. All right. So let's go ahead and do that one before we compile and run this thing. So I have a variable already called length that's uh, set to zero up here. So I'm just going to reassign that. So length is going to be equal to sentence dot length. And you do need to put an empty set of parentheses there. All right, so that's the format that you use for these functions. So we use the dot. And you have the variable, the string variable that contains the string preceding it. And then you have the function that you want after or on the right side of the period. And all of the functions in, in this example follow this format. Okay, so now that we have determined the length, and this will give us the total number of characters in that string, then we'll just output that information to the console. So let's see out. Okay, the length of the sentence is, and let's put a colon there, and then the, you know, double quote, and we'll output the variable length. And let's put an end line after that. Alright, now, uh, we're going to do these, uh, step through these one at a time, so I'm going to insert a, a system pause right here, so that we'll not print out the other stuff just yet. Okay, now, um, uh, let's see. I want to also let's do a C out with a couple of end lines here. So that would give us plenty of space separating each one of these examples. Okay, let's build it and execute it. Our program is now running. Okay, so uh, we're going to get from the uh, the first three C outs, uh, string processing functions, the sentence is, and then we have the uh, sentence CS121 meets printing to the screen below that. Okay, the next thing we're going to do, we'll just print out length, the word length. We'll find the length using the function, and then we'll print out the length of the sentence is. And so we see that on the screen, or the output, the length of the sentence is 57. So that means that if you look at this uh, sentence and you count all the characters including the blanks and the period at the end you have a total of 57 characters. Now let's look at the next function and this is the function called size and I want to show you a different way to do this. I'm not going to use an intermediate variable. Okay, Length is what would I call an intermediate variable but we didn't have to do that. Uh, we could have just taken the uh, string and the function and we could have inserted that directly in our output string instead of using this intermediate variable length. So in this case, I'm just going to directly insert the, the function in the uh, Cout string. 
So we go C out. Okay, double quote. The size of the sentence is. Okay, so I'll put a colon and a double quote. And then directly in this output uh, stream, I'll do the function sentence.size. And again, it needs uh, the empty uh, parentheses. And I'll do an end line right there. All right, now I'm going to get the uh, system pause and the uh, couple of uh, line fees from the previous example. Okay, so I'm just going to copy that and uh, let's paste it down here. And let's put a couple of spaces between the, the examples. And then I'm going to just go back and remove that system pause so it doesn't stop twice. All right, so now it will stop at this point. All right, so let's build it and let's see what the size function gives us. Okay, the program's running. And now the output window looks like this. So we have all the previous stuff. And then near the bottom we have size. So let's see. Yeah, that's output by this cout statement. And the size of the sentence is 57. Okay, so as it turns out, the length and the size are the same thing. So in this example, that's that's just fine uh, because actually size is giving us the amount of storage required in bytes, and uh, one character requires one byte of storage. So that's why you see both of those numbers being equal. The next function is called find. So let's put a comment prior to that and let's explain what it does okay find locates the position of a substring within a larger string Okay, so what this does is it'll give us a position of some um, series of characters that we're searching for in the overall string itself. Okay, so find is the uh, function that we use for that. And I just want to, it's going to return a position, and the position is just going to be an integer value. So I'm going to use the variable position this time to capture the return of find. So position is going to be equal to sentence dot find and uh, this time in parentheses we need to provide a substring so let's suppose the substring is 121 okay so uh, whichever substring you're searching for you need to enclose that in double quotes so this has to be a string uh, previously when we were looking at manipulators there was a set fill and with set fill you only had a single character that was allowed so we had a single quote but in the case of a multi-character string, you need to use the double quotes. So what this is going to do is to look for the sequence one to one in the string sentence, and what that what it will return is the position within the string of that substring. Okay, so let's print that out. Get some space there. So let's do C out. Okay, double quote the string. Well, this is the substring. The substring 121 begins at position, and that's going to be returned and saved in the variable position. So let's do a double quote there, and we'll print out the variable position. And let's do an end line. All right. Now, once again, I'm just going to uh, copy and paste the uh, C out in the system pause. So we stop after we've demonstrated this, and I'll delete the previous system pause. All right, so now we're going to look at this. So we have find, uh, sentence.find. We're looking for 121, and then we'll print out the position where that substring begins. Okay, let's build it and run it. The program's running, and here's what the output looks like. So the previous output is shown here, so let's uh, scroll down to the find part of this. So we print out the, the word find, and then we see that the substring 121 begins at position 3. All right, so let's scroll back up 
uh, and look at the sentence, the entire sentence. So if we begin counting with the C, and we started at, if we start at 1, that's 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so the 1 in 121 would appear to be the fourth character. Well, that's true. It is the fourth character, but that is considered to be position 3, because in computer science, we begin counting at 0. So the character on the far left-hand side of a string is considered to be at position 0. So 0, the S is at 1, space is at 2, and the first one, the 121, is at position 3. And that's what the uh, find function returns, that position of the, the first character. All right, so that demonstrates find. But before we leave it, what would happen if the string 121 was not part of the sentence? What do we get then? What if it doesn't find the string that it's looking for? Well, let's make a small change here. Let's suppose we were looking for string 122, the substring 122. Well, that's not in the string, so it's, it will not find it. So let's see what we get when that happens. So let's quickly build and run this example. Here's the output. All right, so this time let's look at find again. Okay, so I'm going to scroll this up so we only see that part of the output. It says uh, the substring 121. Well, that's because I didn't change the comment, so it still says 121. So we're really looking for 122, but it didn't find it. Okay, so it said it begins at position and it has a huge number. All right, so if the find function doesn't find the substring, then it'll return this very large number. So you can test uh, to see if it found it, and uh, the most convenient way, perhaps, would be to use an if statement, so that if the position is greater than the length of the string, then that means that the string is not in there, the substring is not in the main string. So that's one way to do that. Okay, now let's move on to the uh, next function, which will be to pull out a substring of characters from a string. I'm going to make a change to the comment because uh, position 30 is uh, a long way to count. So I'm going to make that uh, a little bit closer to the left hand side of the string. So the output statement is going to be changed the, subs the uh, substring of, let's make it five characters. And I want to begin at position 18. So yes, I've looked ahead and counted, so I know what I'm looking for here. All right, so let's use C H A R A. C left out a C there characters. All right, so now let's look at how we can do this. All right, now I'm I'm going to first of all I'm going to scroll up and I want to declare another string variable. Let's do string part and set it equal to the null string. And I want to save the extracted substring into this variable part. Okay, so let's do that part is equal to sentence sentence dot substring which is spelled s u b s t r now the substring function requires two arguments the first one is the position within the string that you want to where you want to start so i want to start at position 18 comma and the next number is how many characters do you want to extract beginning at that position. So I said I wanted five this time. So this statement is going to extract five characters beginning at position 18 of sentence and it will save those five characters into the string variable part. All right, now I've already got an output that says the substring at position 18 is so that's enough descriptive information so I'm just going to do a C out and output the substring part and at an end line and like I've done in the other examples I'm just going to copy the uh, pause and uh, end lines and paste those in and I'll delete the previous system pause okay so now we will compile and run this example here's the output window so looking at the bottom, and let's scroll again just so we see the, 
the result of substring. So we see the substring of five characters at position 18 is 1110, so we extracted the time. Okay, now let's scroll back to the top and look at the sentence, and let's just count over and uh, see where these occur. All right, so there's the sentence. The sentence is, and I want it to go to, pos to position 18, uh, starting with zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and the one and eleven ten is at position eighteen. So that's what we put into our substring as our first argument. From there, I want the five characters, which is eleven colon and ten. So it will the substring will extract those five characters and save them into the uh, string variable part as we've seen here and then we just print that out okay so that's how substring works the last function that I wanted to demonstrate with this example is at so we have an output statement and uh, yeah, let's go ahead and reduce the space between these a little bit so I'm saying the character at position 45 is well once again I don't really want to count that far over so I'm going to change that uh, I'm going to just read the character at position number four so that'll be easier for us to read all right so now we just want to print those out um, we could put that we could embed that in the C out statement if we wanted to but I've got the variable letter declared so I'm going to use it so the letter single character is equal to sentence at so there's the at function and the at function requires an integer value representing the position so I said I wanted position number four Okay, so this will extract the single character at position 4, and it will save it in variable letter. All right, so once again, I've got the information printed up above. The character at position 4 is, so then I can just do another C out statement here and output the variable letter to an end line. And I'll copy and paste like I've been doing for the other examples. Now delete the system pause up there, and we'll run, build and run this example. Here's the output, and I've scrolled the output window so we can see the uh, output from our last example using at. So it says the character at position four is the number two. Right. So that's produced from here. So we output the letter, and we have extracted it from position four and assigned it to the variable letter. So let's scroll back, uh, let's bring that window back up and let's count over to position number four and see what we get. Okay, so the sentence is counting with zero, one, two, three, four, so you can see that the character at position four is the number two. Okay, so that's uh, enough for this particular run. Um, one additional thing I wanted to point out here is that you can treat a string in the same way that you can treat it, uh, that you can use a character array that you probably have learned in basic C programming, just ordinary C programming. So I want to demonstrate that quickly. So I'm going to slip that in right here. So let's do a C out, okay, double quote, whoops, those first, now double quote, and let's do case two, treat string, or treat sentence, as a character array. Okay, period, double quote, end line. So this time I'm going to use C out, and instead of using the at function, I'm going to print out sentence and use the square bracket, the number four, and another square bracket, and an end line. So what this is going to do is to treat the array, I'm um, sorry, treat the string sentence as a character array. And the 4 serves as the index. So begin, uh, if you start counting at 0, as you would with any sort of an array, then the number 4 means that we're going to get the fifth element of the array. And if we look at our sentence up here, we see that uh, C is at 0, S is at 1, 
with the spaces at 2, the 1 is at 3, and the value of 2 is at, at 4. So this could be considered and implemented syntactically as a character array using the square brackets. Okay, so let's build this and run it quickly and see what the output looks like. Here's the output, and you can see by looking near the bottom, um, from the case where we used at, we print out the character at position 4 is 2. And when I use the character array, for the, uh, the case 2 part, we print out case 2, straight, treat sentence as a character array, and I print out the value 2. Right? So sentence index 4 is sort of the equivalent of using sentence at 4. So you can treat the uh, you know treat the string as a character array and in some instances you might want to do that now this isn't really a problem because the uh, C++ language is built on top of our old-fashioned C programming language so uh, most of the uh, C uh, of the string library that you see in C++ is built on top of the old-fashioned character arrays that I've demonstrated here okay well this video is getting pretty long we still have a couple of things to do and uh, that is to write a function that will create a reverse version of the sentence. But uh, we'll take that up in the next video.